So this is, this is the talk I gave last year in Vienna. And so I'm going to recycle it. Uh, and hopefully you all will find it useful. And I, I keep in mind the talk in Vienna was I was talking with Wikimedia developers. So it was focused on them and telling them why uh, people outside the foundation, why they would want to use MediaWiki and why they, why they find it so useful. Um, so without too much more, let's see if, uh, no, no, no. What has focus right now? Linux. <laughs> there I go. What are others use others? You all are others. Who are others? You. Uh, non media wiki, third party government agencies, corporations, NGOs, and individuals. I think that covers everyone here. Um, does anyone not feel like they've been covered in that? Okay, fine. Association. So, you know, if I'm Wikimedia uh, board member, I'm saying, why do I care about these people using MediaWiki outside of the foundation? Why would anyone want to do that? You know, we have this, our vision is the sum of all knowledge, free, freely sharing the sum of all knowledge. That's our commitment. So why would we want, so why not use Wikipedia? So, um, yeah, um, maybe, yeah, your baby pictures don't belong on Wikipedia. If you put your baby pictures on Commons, I can 99% guarantee you they will be deleted. Maybe not. <laughs> so, uh, and not, again, not everything is suitable for Wikipedia. There's game wikis and stuff like Bulbapedia um, and NASA's wiki. Uh, you could set up a wiki, for example, about tight lining. Uh, who knows what tight lining is? No, that, that's what I thought too. Tight lining is it's some sort of makeup thing, you know. I, I don't know, tight lining. My daughter told me. I'm trying to be cool. Yeah, okay. So, yeah, and the other thing, there are various interpretations of uh, knowledge, you know, the same piece of knowledge. Um, the thing, it's, and, and you don't want the people who have these drastically different interpretations of knowledge on the, necessarily on the same wiki. For example, if I'm a Mormon, a devout Mormon, uh, and I'm, I have a wiki about the, the Book of Mormon or Joseph Smith, I'm probably not going to be very friendly to contributors who are completely academic. You know, go get your own wiki. So that's what MediaWiki allows you to do. Go get your own wiki. Because it's open source. So uh, the foundation has released, um, perhaps, perhaps without really thinking through the whole thing, they've released MediaWiki. And it's open source now, so everyone can use it. It's out there. It's GPL, you know. And even if they went, even if they stopped today and took everything away, what is out there is out there. So anyway, oh, I still talk about this. Um, so why do people use it? Because they're familiar with it. Everyone knows Wikipedia. You mention Wikipedia, and they say, oh yeah. And you mention you have your own wiki, and they. You know, they connect it, Wikipedia. Um, reliability. So there can be some improvement here, but it is, Wikimedia is a fairly reliable distributor of software. They have, they have security updates, they have regular six month releases, they give you access to the code that's running live on live Wikipedia, you know. So they, they're, as far as from a corporate standpoint, 
there's a pretty good uh, stream of updates there. Um, um, what's this say? Findability. <laughs> Findability. So, oh yeah, that's why you want to set up your own wiki. Sorry, I'm reading these over again. Um, maybe on your wiki you ha about tight lining, you want to have this one tight lining technique. And you, it would be hard to find that on Wikipedia because it's the sum of all knowledge. You don't want the sum of all knowledge. You want the sum of everything about tight lining. I hope I didn't screw that example up. Uh, shareability. So yeah, MediaWiki is made for sharing knowledge. Um, who said, oh, Chris, you use the example of one to many. Uh, when you talk about it, I don't think it's one to many. I think it's many to many um, because there are many people contributing to the software, and so they're share or they're contributing to the wiki, and a lot of people come and they read the wiki. Um, so yeah, that's another reason to use MediaWiki. And look, I'm not done yet. Agility. MediaWiki, as we all know, is very flexible and adaptable to the needs of everyone, or various people. Not everyone, I should not go that far. Um, transparency is awesome. There, there's this whole audit trail that's built into MediaWiki. That's why a lot of people, they, they don't understand this. They say, oh, a wiki, anyone can edit that. But then what they don't realize is yes, editing is more open, but there's this transparency and accountability, and I think that helps when you're looking at, you know, the classification of knowledge that goes on there. Um, I, again, I'm not, I don't work with ITAR and this stuff, but I think the, the transparency and accountability helps you deal with some of this classification thing. Uh, I see Darren kind of smiling, he's like, he doesn't know what he's talking about. He's right, I don't. Oh yeah, that's the other reason. There's a significant community, as hard as it is for us to find each other. I mean, I'm looking here and there's less than 40 people here, I think. And, but there's still, you know, a community of people. So. So why do third, oh look, we have another slide. Why do third parties use MediaWiki? The like I said, the value of MediaWiki is apparent to everyone, or a lot of people, shouldn't say everyone. Everyone uses Wikipedia, uh, it's a huge brand, and so when you put up a wiki and you say this is like Wikipedia, they, they almost immediately know what you're talking about. Um, some of you guys have demonstrated a real passion for for what you're doing in MediaWiki, and that that's that's been pretty impressive as I've wa watched this over the past few days here. Um, oh yeah, we were talking about top down versus bottom up sort of things the other day or earlier, and so it is MediaWiki is personal and autonomous. You have control over what you put in the wiki or your individual users do. Um, I was just telling Evita that she can do a lot more things on the wiki than she realizes, um, and it gives her more power. There's a lot of, uh, uh, what she has out of the box does not depend on me. I mean, sometimes it does. Sometimes I have to go install an extension, but there's a lot that you can do out of the box. So yeah, it's, it's knowledge sharing. Woo. So, okay, this all, I have a couple of examples I'm gonna give you here, but we're, this kind of goes with Conway's Law, which someone, who gave me Conway's Law? I forget, they gave me, someone at the Vienna Conference gave me Conway's Law. Organizations which design systems are constrained to produce designs which are copies of the communication structures of these organizations. So Wikimedians have created 
software that captures their communication structure. So when you install MediaWiki, you're getting not only, you know, the a way to share information, but basically it's encoded. The, the, the whole culture is captured in, in code. And that's what you're, you're getting. Um, so, okay, some examples from, I believe this is last year's, uh, this is last year's EMWCon, the South Dakota Legends for Excellence Wiki. Um, I met the woman who designed this, and it, it, it's kind of fascinating. She's been working with computers since 1983. She has, which, you know, I'm like, yeah, that's kind of, when I started, I had a Commodore 64. But anyway, oh, I didn't have one. I played with one. Um, so yeah, it's, it's, she has minimal experience with MediaWiki, but she's been using computers for a long time, personal computers. Um, and yet she's managed to create this, with her minimal knowledge, she's managed to create this Hall of Fame, that's what HOFers, Hall of Fame wiki uh, that, that the families of people who have been recognized by South Dakota, I bet you didn't notice, know that South Dakota had legends of excellence. Now you do. Anyway. Um, so it's, it, these are people that often have passed away or died, um, and their families come along and want to update the, the wiki entry for their, you know, the person that they care about. And they can do that through forms on the page that she has set up. Um, so it's built around it's built around, the, the fascinating thing about this is because it's a wiki and not a web application, although a wiki is a web application, because it's a wiki, it's built around the content and not necessarily, you know, oh, look at this GWiz JavaScript doohickey I can do. Um, yeah, this is another one. Uh, I, let me hang on. So this is uh, called a WikiX because I didn't have permission to actually use the name of the wiki. Um, uh, but they use MediaWiki and they, they point out how the use of MediaWiki gets people to stop hoarding information. Uh, there's some discussion about this as well. Wikis allow information to grow and it frees your time because people aren't going to that one person who knows something and saying, hey, can you help me out? And uh, so it saves time. That's a time saving right there. I bet there's a metric for that somewhere. Um, you should, y'all should think about that when you're doing your metrics. Um, oh yeah, the people who are the creators of knowledge, it, again, it empowers the, the the end point of knowledge rather than the gatekeeper of the knowledge, the manager, whoever. It, it empowers the individuals. So yeah, the, in the example that they gave was an editor, since his organization is spread over um, a large area, they, they have to organize meetings by time zone and all that, and that was a trouble. So someone, an individual, how an individual uh, exercise the power that they had to create a template that would show the local time of the user view viewing the wiki uh, when they went to that page. So they could say, just go to the page and instead of using a web app like what time is it or I forget the meeting app that I was using. Instead of doing that they just use a template that's built into the wiki to show the local time. MITRE Corporation, I think we've heard a lot about them. Um, I'm not going to add any more. Plus, I'm, I'm at half of my time here, so. Um, and and I, like I said, you know, the people before me went over, so I'm cutting mine short. So, anyway. 
Um, so yeah, these are just some quotes that I select I got from people who had been I met at EMWCon last year. Um, other types of wikis don't have the same focus. This is huge. This this first thing is huge because if you use Confluence or you use uh, SharePoint Wiki or these other things, the whole ethos is completely different than, and it's not, it's not because they couldn't build it that way, it's because they didn't have the community of Wikipedia shaping the software and showing them, you know, this is how we want this software to work. So now you all benefit from that community that built that software and instead of a manager saying, I want the software to be able to do X, it has to have these controls. It's not built on control from the start, which can be a problem, but it's also an advantage because it's user focused um, from the start. And it, it's a result, it's an emergent property. There, I, I got to use my word. Um, so yeah, again, I believe this was that the woman from the South Dakota wiki, she said, a lot of what I've done is insulate people from technical details. Um, I'm, a techno I'm a technological guy. I like the technical details. And I, I appreciate when my users can ask me, you know, questions and say, can you do X for me? But at the same time, the wiki gives those users the ability to uh, hide, as this person has done, hide all this power and all the moving parts from the people who are using the, the wiki. Um, so someone said about semantic media wiki and forms. They said what your own has done, your own and Yarin. Yarun, Yarun Dadao, and Yarn Corn have done borders on magic. So we have magicians in our midst, in case you didn't know. Um, oh yeah, and it's so easy, people couldn't do it themselves. Yeah, there, there might be a little learning curve to learning wiki text, but even that has been gone away. Um, I was thinking about this, I was talking, who was I talking with on the way home last night? Um, yeah, you. I'm sorry, I'm horrible with names, and here I just demonstrated it in front of a huge crowd of 40 people. I'm so embarrassed. Um, yeah, so it's so easy, people can do it themselves. The, uh, and okay, so what I'm thinking of here is the visual editor. The Wikimedia Foundation created the visual editor because they thought it would reduce barrier to entry. But then my understanding, what I got from all their postmortems and all this was it didn't change the editor retention in the way that they thought it would initially going into it. Um, and I think it was because they focused on making the wiki easy to use and the people who were already using it didn't care. Um, whereas if they wanted to capture new users, they should have gone out and meant and completely or at least done a lot more, a lot better job of imitating Microsoft's Word toolbar or whatever you call it. And, and then people would click on edit and they'd be like, it's Microsoft Word. I know exactly what to do. Instead, they get this black and white ribbon, which, you know, it looks vaguely familiar, but they're like, what do I do? There's no cursor. Anyway, anyway. Conclusion, MediaWiki is an opinionated software. Uh, Wikipedia's way of sharing knowledge has been codified. Uh, and, and I have 10 minutes left to blather on, or I can go sit down and you can get another cup of coffee, or you can ask me questions, or you tell me why I'm wrong. Okay, yay.